Welcome to Digital Asset News to get top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, more bullish news as if it can't get any better, but it does. Global equity head at Jefferies says the investment bank will buy Bitcoin and reduce exposure to gold. So what this means is another billion dollar company is dumping gold for Bitcoin. Also, Grayscale is temporarily stopping accepting new clients in six crypto trusts. This is not unusual as it happened back in 2019, but the timing is a little bit odd. And also, Michael Saylor and MicroStrategy have completed their purchase of almost 30,000 Bitcoins for $650 million at a piece, and they've been buying at a whopping 21925 per Bitcoin. So the question is asked, if MicroStrategy keeps buying, should you? And we're getting all that, but first, let's continue on with our 12 days of Christmas. Getting away a lot of cool stuff. Yesterday, we did the drawing for the I trust capital crypto IRA three months free plus swag. And I had the folks over there at I trust capital draw it. And they send me over these pictures. And these are the winners. We've got Eric C, Eric Phillips, James Cooper, Matthew Boggio, and Gary Green. So gentlemen, if you would just do me a favor and come on over to danteacherscrypto.com, click on the contact tab right here, send me an email with your name and I will send your information over to Anthony and he'll get you all set up with those three months and a swag bag. Thanks for playing. Also on top of that, we've got something special today and that is Market Rebellion. We're going to be giving away actually one free year long membership to the trading education platform. And on the 25th, we're gonna double up by giving another free membership plus two Trade the Chain memberships. So these I believe are, should go together. I'm going to tell you why. So Marco Rebellion has been started by Pete and John Jarian. Uh, those are the two gentlemen right there. I think John here played for uh, Chicago Bears. You've seen him on CNBC. Pretty smart guys. They know a lot about options and trading and so forth. And they have been getting into cryptocurrency because they believe it is a great opportunity just like all of us. So they got a pretty good platform. They give you crypto trade ideas, charts, member forum, live weekly webinars to keep you on track, a crypto education curriculum, and a bunch of other stuff. I have actually signed up. I have been too busy to get into it, but it looks really good. I need to know a little bit more about uh, trading, even though I'm not going to do a lot of it, but I think it's something that I should understand. So if you want to win a year-long membership to Market Rebellion, just go ahead and comment in the comments below. Just put Market Rebellion, and I'll have the folks over there draw the name of the lucky winner, and I'll let you know in tomorrow's video. But before we get into that, let's take a look at what's going on in the market. So today it is the 21st of December. It is almost 5 p.m. El Paso, Texas time. I'm getting done late because a lot of things to do. So what do we got? Well, a little bit of a tussle. Bitcoin below 23,000, down 2.7, but hey, 20% for the week. I'll take those numbers all day long. 610 for Ethereum, XRP, 51 cents. Watch out, Tether, nobody cares. Litecoin, negative eight cents, but still amazing run for Litecoin. I really should have got into that. I just can't buy Litecoin again. 28% for the seven days. I used to own it a long time ago. I just didn't really like what Charlie did. That doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. What really matters is that Litecoin is going to be huge because it's on PayPal. It's one of the four horsemen, and I think it's going to be big. Bitcoin Cash down almost, wow, 10%, 14% for the week. Chainlink, let's see, is anything up? Jeez, let's just talk about what's up. And Zippo, Bupkis. Let's take a look at Bitcoin and see if we just would have invested in Bitcoin, would have been okay or not. Well, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Except for Cosmos. Hey, congratulations, Cosmos holders. And that's pretty much it. So, all right, let's jump into today's top stories. So here we go. This is huge. I think this is huge. This is, this is huge to me. I always like when billion dollar companies who are heavy into gold go, you know what? We're going to drop gold and uh, go into Bitcoin because it just proves my point or our point that uh, people are finally trying to get it and institutions are really trying to come on in. So global equity head of Jefferies says the investment bank will buy Bitcoin and reduce exposure to gold. First of all, who the heck is Jefferies? It's hard to keep all these billion dollar companies straight, but Jefferies Group LLC is an American multinational investment bank and financial services company headquartered in NYC. Firm provides capital or clients with capital markets, financial advisory services, brokerage, securities, blah, blah, blah. They do a lot of stuff. Great. Good for them. So their revenue or their total assets under management, you're looking at $44 billion. So no slouches. Looks like they know what they're doing. Uh, they know their way around a little bit of the money. So uh, what's happening here? Well, Christopher Wood, head of equi equity of Jeopardies, says his firm will reduce exposure to gold in favor of Bitcoin. There are, this is interesting. There are plans to increase the crypto component of Jeffrey's long only global portfolio for US dollar denominated pension funds 
if and when the Bitcoin price drops from current levels. And when we get into this, it actually kind of flips around. So this is what's going on. Before this happened, Jeffrey's funds were as follows. It was half or 50% towards physical gold bullion. Now it's 45% because they reduced their uh, position. Now it's going to be 5% of Bitcoin. I think it will increase later. 30% to Asia X Japan, Jap, X Japan equities and 20% to unhedged gold mining stocks. So he wrote in his weekly greed and fear note to all the investors, the global head of equity explains the multinational investment banks rationale for choosing Bitcoin over gold. Cause I gotta tell you, I gotta tell you, I think this is probably a pretty shock to the system. When a lot of these guys who have been in this fund for probably quite some time, Jeffries was started in the, in the 1960s. So I bet a lot of people have been there from their grandfather, their father, and whoever else there was. Now they're saying, you know what, everybody, we're going to reduce for the first time in history our position in gold to Bitcoin. That must have been a shock. So the 50% weight in physical gold bullion in the portfolio will be reduced for the first time in several years by five points with the money invested in Bitcoin. If there's a big drawdown, this is the key. If there's a big drawdown in Bitcoin from the current level, after the historic breakout above the 20,000 level, the intention will be to add to this position, which, hey, even smart money does a little dollar cost averaging, so good for them. So just moving down, I don't wanna get everybody's uh, hopes dashed. They're not gonna go all the way out of gold because Wood said this, the yellow metal should rally again if the Fed stays dovish. That's a good word. In the face of the dramatic cyclical recovery and some other stuff. So great, they're gonna stay in gold. Okay, good for them. Predictions, but this is important. Predictions by strategists at JP Morgan that institutional investors will sell some of their gold holdings and use the proceeds to finance Bitcoin purchases. This is after some gold bug said it wasn't gonna happen, but it's true. It's happening again and again and again. Institutions are saying, you know what? We're gonna get out of gold and we're gonna get into Bitcoin because the upside potential is so enormous. Bitcoin's a great hedge. I own gold, I own silver, I own Bitcoin. I just own a heck of a lot more Bitcoin than I do gold and silver. And the reason is because there's a massive upside potential. Gold is great, you know, when the world collapses and, you know, there's mutants all over the place and you're trying to save your family. But in all honesty, uh, Bitcoin going to 100,000, I can see that. That's about a 5x. I did not see gold going from whatever it is now, 1800, and jumping up to 10,000. I just, that's not going to happen. So that is why uh, I have allocated more funds into Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies digital assets. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Let's move on. Next up, this is weird timing. Grayscale temporarily stops accepting new clients in six crypto trusts. This is from Danny Nelson. And uh, just a real small snippet. He says, Grayscale does periodically close off its crypto trust to so-called private placement rounds. Such actions happened repeatedly in Q4 2019, which I can get that. In 2019, maybe they just had like, you know, just a big rush of people that came in or they just were, you know, lax in, in, their, in their purchasing of Bitcoin and they couldn't take anybody else in. But I think right now, as much as they're doing, as much as they're trying to buy and buy and buy, remember, it's not just Grayscale now. Now you got to compete with PayPal. Now you got to compete with MicroStrategy. Now you got to compete with Mass Mutual and all the other shadow companies that aren't making it public right now. You have to compete with all those people. So maybe Grayscale is like, there's only so much to go around. So sorry. And then here's the thing. If they keep buying and buying and buying, what happens then? Well, the price goes up. They don't want the price to go up right now. They want to ease off the gas a little bit. And this goes into our next point. Even with temporary closing new investors, Grayscale will still be able to obtain added capital from existing investors until it reopens again to new ones. On Monday, JP Morgan analysts wrote that a dramatic slowdown in Grayscale Bitcoin inflows could jack up the odds of a Bitcoin reduction or correction. So of course, they're going to say, you know what, uh, we're going to stop uh, buying so much and let's just cool off for a little bit because it's just going a little bit too fast. We got a lot of our friends and institutions who really want to get in this game and we can't really pump the price up. I mean, look, Jeffrey's over here is waiting for a dump and we got to give it to him. I'm just kidding. I don't know if that's really happening, but it sounds good when I say things like that. It just uh, adds the mystery. Who knows they're doing that or something else going on, but it is a little bit odd especially when you got New York-based Grayscale is owned by Digital Currency Group, the parent company of Coindesk, which is where this article is coming from. But just to be sure, I went over there and just took a look and I did, I filled out a form and it's true. Uh, Grayscale Bitcoin Trust is unavailable. Uh, Bitcoin Cash, unavailable. Ethereum, that classic. Uh, Grayscale Ryzen Trust, you can. But look at that. Our good old XRP, no problem. You can get in there, no problem. Sterile Lumen, Zcash, 
Absolutely. Everything else, sorry, Charlie, we've got nothing for you. It's just one of those weird things. Let me know what you think in the comment section. I just find it to be odd timing. That's all I'll say. Lastly, Michael Saylor from MicroStrategy. This guy's everywhere. I think this is this this guy really is the new Bitcoin Jesus. He really is trying to convert as many people as he possibly can. Everybody has heard the whole thing with uh, Elon Musk and him trying to convince him. Who knows? Elon Musk is Elon. I don't know what's going to happen. I didn't really want to cover it because everybody else was talking about it. So who cares? So if he does, that's great. If uh, Tesla starts to buy Bitcoin, fantastic. It'll be a huge catalyst, but who knows? But this is the story. Michael Saylor says, hey, we did a funding round. We built up a lot of capital and we were able to purchase, finally, uh, almost 30,000 Bitcoins for $650 million at an average price of $21.9 which means is that they were paying a little more, a little bit less, obviously, but they were still buying Bitcoin. And people would ask me, they go, well, are you still gonna dollar cost average? You know, cause I sold a little bit of Bitcoin. Yes, I'm still gonna dollar cost average in. I'm still gonna dollar cost average in. I had a video about this, about when I will actually stop. The magic number for me is 30K. And I explained exactly why that 30K is. You can watch that video or go over to danteachescrypto.com Look in module three, investing. It's the last video that I have placed right there. Very simple, and I laid all the numbers. But I think it's interesting that he's still doing it. He's still gonna be buying. I think Sailor's gonna be buying for a long time. And what's fascinating about MicroStrategy is they've said, look, we're not selling. We're gonna keep this on the books for 100 years. Now, that's a long time, let's see if he does it. But so far, he's been pretty much true to his word. So this, by doing this, and these companies doing and buying Bitcoin from the treasury, it doesn't fluctuate the market so much and it keeps it a little bit stagnant or a little bit more stable. Now, I will remind you of one thing. They are not buying Ethereum that much. They are not buying XRP. They're not buying Bitcoin Cash. They're not buying Cardano. They're not buying altcoins. They're just getting into Bitcoin right now. Maybe way behind the scenes, perhaps. I have no idea. But at least publicly, this is what it is. So I believe Bitcoin will go on a rise, but not as meteorically as before. And it certainly won't crash down because these guys are here. I think it'll be a little slower like we just talked about. Alts, there's still a season for that. People will still flow into it. But I think Bitcoin is, I mean, a lot of the in institutional investors and the alts, a bunch of retail. So catch it while it's hot. And that's it for today. So rem as a quick reminder, if you would like to win that Market Rebellion free one year membership, just put in Market Rebellion in the comments below. Also, I believe that with Market Rebellion and Trade the Chain together, it's like an unbeatable combo. Market Rebellion is all about TA. Trade the Chain is all about SA. Technical analysis with Market Rebellion and sentiment analysis with Trade the Chain. Just this week, they had a great call. GRT, they made it up to 211%. And these notifications that they send you are right on your cell phone. So it's super simple. All you do is look at your phone and go, wow, this one got listed. Let me take a look at that real quick. You get into it. It was at 18 cents December 18th at 5.19 a.m. Eastern Time. Went up to 50, 56 cents in three hours, if my math is correct from 5 a.m. to 8 a.m. That's amazing. And that's not just the only one. They've had many a call like that, and it's all on this platform that they've built that crawls throughout all these blog posts, has one of only four of the cryptocurrency companies that has a direct API in Twitter, and they take billions and billions of tweets and show you exactly what's going to happen as far as like listings, partnerships, hacks, all the good stuff, all the bad stuff, so you can make these types of trades. So again, Market Rebellion and TTC or Trade the Chain, I think it's an unbeatable combination. If you wanna look into Trade the Chain, just look in the description below. There's a link to check it out. And that is all. So, so thanks for sticking with me. I appreciate it. If you like these types of videos, there's going to be two more that's going to pop up on your left and right. I'll let uh, YouTube do its magic. And that is all for today. So thanks again. Really appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.